All right, so let's work on some poses. Um, I'm just gonna whip up a couple poses from Imagination and let's get to it. This is a live, live drawing, so I'm not time-lapsing or anything like that. Um, I have no idea what I'm going to draw yet, but typically when I'm drawing, what I'll, let's say you have the most intimidating thing, which is what? A blank page, right? So most people, when they see a blank page, they're like, what do I do with it? Where do I start? And sometimes they're intimidated to the point where they just get on their phone or, you know, procrastinate and, you know, they never get to it. So basically the best thing to do is just touch the paper. Like just get that, get your hands in motion and, you know, make some movements. Okay. So with that said, I'm just going to do a quick pose. Let's just it'll probably be generic. It's my first sketch. So of this evening, uh, I'll start with a head. So let's do, I hope you can see this. Maybe I should zoom in a little. All right, starting with kind of a head shape and then let's say, typically at this point, you're trying to think, all right, I'm, is this character coming at me? And is he looking down? Is he looking up? Is he looking straight directly at me? Three quarter. Um, what kind of pose is he in? And typically, um, what I'll do with this type of a quick pose is I'll just draw kind of a diagonal line. And that's just giving me kind of a guide of the angle that I'm going to Put his arms and his shoulders in so you know we can imagine that one shoulder will be up here one will be here now typically i don't draw shoulders like that i don't draw the balls and the cylinders at least not initially what i'll do is i'll just here i'll just show you what i do i really just initially and i'm talking and drawing at the same time uh just do this kind of like very sketchy scratchy looking art which you can't tell what's what at this point. But I can see a couple things that are going through my mind right now is I can see that this is the chest area, right? And it's going backwards. So I'm seeing that it's curving backwards and it's getting smaller, which is kind of a form of foreshortening. So then with that being said, I can say, well, maybe, and this paper is kind of warped. I don't know if you can see, but uh, I'm going to have to press down here. Maybe he'll have a leg down here. And then maybe this, this leg, we won't even mess with it right now. Um, we'll focus on this arm. So let's say since this leg's coming at us, and this is left leg, I'll make his right arm coming at us as well. Um, so you see what I'm doing here? I'm basically, from where I'm speculating his shoulder will be, I'm popping out kind of a, a letter L, right? And then at the end of this L, I'm putting a circle. And I'm just imagining that, okay, this is where his hand would be. And then you can just start shaping things. So I'll shape his arm kind of like this. And I'll project it back towards his shoulder. Now I'm going to pop his shoulder up a little like this. And what I mean by that is I raise it up from where I initially had it. And then we'll figure out what we're going to do with his hands in a bit. With this other arm, what I can do is... I can decide if I want to lift it up to, or if I want to lower it down. If I lower it down, what would happen is you would just see kind of a section of a hand come out over here, right? If I raise it up, you might see a whole arm like this. So there's different options. Um, so why don't we just kind of 
develop a little bit more of the body. Now it helps a lot if you know what you're drawing before you're drawing, but for the sake of this video, I just wanted to draw from imagination and just create something on the, on the fly. Because I don't know about you, but for me as an artist, one of the most rewarding things is just being able to draw without thinking. Just, it, it really puts a good test to your skills, lets you know where you are, and you know you can actually find out, all right, well, I need some improvement in this area. This is, this is one of my weaknesses, and this is one of my strengths. I should be doing this more often. And so I really encourage you to get into a habit of just drawing. And as you can see, I don't really care about the outcome of this sketch yet. So I'm not married to any of these lines. And it's very, very sketchy. And we'll, we'll change all that soon. We'll come back and we'll start finding the lines that we want to keep. We'll do some erasing. Um, I'm trying to do this in a timely fashion. Good luck with that, right? So what I'll do here is I'm just going to give the generic shape of a fist. Will he be holding a weapon here? I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. Who is this? No idea. But you know what? It, the funny thing about this is it could be almost anyone because if it's a bigger character, you can just add more meat to their bones. Uh, if it's a taller character, you can just stretch them out a little bit more. You know, so we're only limited by our imagination. So what do I want to do? Um, I'm going to work on this, this head here. So I'll just, what I'll do at this stage is I'm not sharpening my pencil or anything, but I, I am putting a little bit more pressure on the pencil. And what that's enabling me to do is just kind of find some lines I want to keep. Now you can see that I'm always moving at this stage. I'm always moving my pencil relatively fast. Um, you're thinking of yourself as a sculptor, right? And you're, you're sculpting as you go along. Don't be a perfectionist where you're trying to get every single line perfect the first go around. Don't do that. Just go with the flow. You'll spot, you know, give some credit to your subconscious mind. You've stared at comic books. You've stared at movies and people your whole life. You actually know a lot more than you think you know. Your, your anatomy, your, you know, where things belong, like, you know it. A lot of times we just get into our own way by overthinking. And this is something I, I learned a long time ago. And, you know, I really recommend that you kind of, I know it sounds cheesy and cliche, but just trust yourself. So there we go. So we have this, this pose. Now, since this hand is down here, and this one is here. I'm thinking that I could probably add some sort of gadget or weapon here. Let's see what we can come up with. Now, I like to explain what's going through my thought process. So a couple things. I'm thinking about what's closest to me. Um, well, it could be this elbow because it's the largest thing on the paper. So that could be closest to me. This looks like it's furthest away, right? This hand, this arm. This head is kind of in the midpoint. It's in the middle. Then we have his chest and his, his cavity, the chest cavity. We have this going back. We have this leg protruding out. And then we have this leg here going off into the distance, which we're not sure what we're doing with that leg yet. I'll figure it out. So then let's, uh, let's do a face. So if I don't know who I'm drawing, generally what I'll do is I'll take the middle of the face here where I think the, the eye line would be, and I'll just draw a circle here lightly and a circle here. 
and that gives it a little bit of a face, right? It gives it some sort of character. From here, I can do my measurements and say, okay, his nose, whoever this character is, nose is gonna be somewhere around here. If he has a mouth, it's gonna be somewhere around here. So that gives me some sort of information so I can do measurements. And then I can always take my eraser and don't forget, you know, erasers are made to be used. You know, if you're, if you think you're cool and you don't erase much and you you think you're, you're all that, well, hey, good luck. I love the eraser. The eraser is my friend. Okay. Here we go. So, haha, <laughs> something just dropped dropped into my mind. I'm not going to tell you yet, but I think you might pick up on it. Let's see. First one to guess gets a golf clap. Okay. I think I'm doing this from imagination. I'm trying to remember character elements. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to remember costume elements and I might have to make up some costume elements. All right, there we go. Um, I'm gonna use this ruler since I have it, it's very handy. And I'm going to just draw a line going through. Actually, let me pull this back a little bit. So I'm pulling this line from here to here to here. And I'm gonna do the same thing about this width. And I'm just gonna draw it all the way out here. Boom. Okay. Now, What can I do here? Do you know who this is yet? I kind of know. I'm a little bit um, torn because I'm not going to draw his standard costume. And it is a he. If that helps. There we go. So at this stage, what I would do is I can come in and I can take my little kneaded eraser. Now this is on really crappy paper and I don't have any expectations. I'm not, usually I wouldn't even show this kind of sketch to anyone. It would just be personal, just just my little warm up. But since you're here, I'm gonna share. So thanks for joining. <clears throat> I'm not even gonna sharpen my pencil. So it's kind of a dull point, if you can see. By the way, this is a two millimeter uh, lead holder pencil. This one is by Prismacolor Turquoise. I've had this one for years. Um, it's not mandatory, but it is preferred. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna go in and just start with an eye here. Now I'm drawing very small compared to what I would normally draw and I'm drawing with a blunt object. That's okay. I like challenges. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see. A lot of people ask me to get a little closer on the faces. So this is kind of the process of me drawing the face. And so we have the eyes in. And I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna draw the tip of the nose where I guesstimated it would be. Underneath it, I'll just draw a little shadow. And then I will draw a mouth. I will, what I'll do is I'll give him kind of little dimples on each side. And then I'll start drawing kind of a round curve. Now I'm gonna skip the middle, I'm gonna break this line up and then keep that curve going here. 
And then what I'll do is I'm going to make him have kind of teeth showing. And then what I what I do at this point, and I'm trying to do this fast, and we're already at 15 minutes. I'm going to draw an under lip here, and then I'm going to measure here. I, this character has kind of a long chin and a long face. Why the long face? And then what I'll do here is I'll just start shaping things in. And this is his mask. And then from here, I'm drawing this angular line that indicates the bottom of his chin, popping up, going up his jawline. And then I'm gonna put his ears somewhere around this height. And if I don't like it, I can come back and change. I like around this height. And then I'm going to come here and put kind of a part of his mask underneath his chin. I'll even shade this in for now. And then I will come up here, draw this, extend this line up, and then I will Follow, see this curve here? I'll follow that curve. Almost giving him uh, kind of a spherical cone head. But then what we'll do at this point is we'll just whip some hair in. And as I said earlier, I'm doing this on the fly, so I haven't really put too much thought into this. But one of the beauties of drawing from imagination is you have no expectations and you never know what you're gonna come up with. Literally 15 minutes ago, I had no idea what I was doing. And here I am, and I still have no idea what I'm doing. But I like it. So I'm I'm going to color this mask in a little bit more. And in case you haven't figured it out, this is kind of my take on Gambit. So there you go. We have kind of the hair sticking out. He has this wild hair. And now I can come back and fine tune this and erase it and redraw it. I don't know if I will, but let's pull back a little bit. And then what I would do is you know, Gambit wears that trench coat and everything, but he also is a pretty athletic dude. So I'm going to keep him in kind of a more athletic look. And so what I'm doing here is I'm starting with this trap, right? This is a, a trapezius muscle. I forget the name. Yes, I have. I teach anatomy and I don't know the name of muscles. And this is uh, his shoulder. And so basically what's happening is this is a contracted muscle. I do know that much. So it's kind of scrunching up and this shoulder is popping up closer to his face. And what that's enabling me to do, it's enabling me to kind of uh, make this look a little bit more dramatic, a little bit more, uh, what's the word, dynamic. And then we're gonna pop in the shoulder underneath. And so here we have the arm. And then this is his elbow. And then from this elbow, we imagine a line straight down. So we know that his wrist is somewhere around here. What I like to do when I'm drawing wrist is kind of do kind of a wrist bone on each side. Pull this in, pull it up. And then, you know, I know Personally, I know that the, the bone is going to be in this area, but I know that there's going to be this muscle that's going to overlap. And there's going to be a muscle under here that's going to overlap. And then you can just start shaping those in. So basically, 
you complement the lines. You see this line here, and then you draw one down here. Same thing here. You see this curve, you draw another. And then in between, you can just draw in some flexed forearm muscles. And then from here, what I would do is, I would imagine that this point of his wrist is a center point. So from here, his hands are gonna sprawl out. However, the way he's holding this, his arm is gonna, his, his wrist is gonna go up like that. And I'm almost wearing a Gambit glove. Mine's not as cool. So then he's, his wrist is gonna go up like this. Now I'm just creating the shape right now. And I'll come back in and do the fingers later. And then he'll have the thumb underneath. Same thing over here. This hand, he will have one finger going like this. And then these fingers will kind of follow. And you can, you'll come back and you'll refine and make them look better. And then this connects to his arm, which you can still do the, the curve here. And a lot of times when you're doing this arm that's far away, you can, you know, add shadow and black it out. Now jumping up to his chest, I'm drawing a collarbone, another collarbone that way. And then right down the center line, I'm imagining the division of his pec muscles, which would go underneath his his uh, shoulder. And then this one would be a little bit elongated because it's pulling back to this shoulder. And then you get this little ball here, which would indicate his shoulder. Now, if you wanted to, you could draw kind of a bicep there, which we might come back and change and alter later, don't worry. If I even finish the sketch, we're already running on 22 minutes. So then I'm just, you know, if you've taken my course on anatomy, I'll leave a link here. Basically what I do is, it's all about shapes, keeping very simple forms. So I'll just draw a rib here, a rib here, right? We're not going to see anything on that side. And then I'm just going to follow the same center line and pull it back. And this is going to give him a dynamic pose. And then right around here, I'm just going to draw in a circle. Now keep in mind, I can come back and clean all this up later. Inside that circle, I can draw an X indicating that he's part of the X-Men. And then I will go ahead and imagine that he has these lats here. Pull this in, wrap this belt around. Now you're not gonna see too much in this area because of this arm. connected to his chest, the chest is connected to his ribs, ribs pulled back here. And then now at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna imagine his leg protruding out this way. Now I'm keeping this shapes very simplified because I have a lot of time to come back and, uh, and sorry, I'm, I'm talking and drawing at the same time and problem solving. It's a lot of stuff to do. Okay, so at this stage, what I can do <clears throat> is uh, let's go ahead and refine this staff that he holds. So we'll find our lines here and just push, push it out draw here 
Now I'm going to connect it. Then I'm going to come back. Actually, let me keep going. And then I'm just going to jump over. Same thing. I'm just going to push it out here. And it's going to connect. And it's going to go all the way down and finish here. Right? And then anything else we can come back in and do details on. So if we wanted to add little elements to the staff, we can go ahead and do that. And basically what I'm trying to do is just mimic the curvature of the staff. And you can even take a line here. Boom. You can just darken that in. It just kind of gives it some depth. Same thing, I can follow this all the way down here to his knuckles, and I can just shade this bottom part in. Okay, so then, now I'm just thinking back to the 80s or 90s uh, X-Men, and I know that he had this like, on his kneecap, he had this kind of armored knee, knee cap protector, I don't know what you would want to call it. And then on his uh, legs, he had these like markings, right? Something like that. And then since this leg is pulling farther back, I'll do those um, indications of the costume element here. Now, I should do use some reference at this stage and just kind of find out, you know, um, what does Gambit wear? Let's see. I think he has this like, I don't know what to call it, but I'm just gonna try and draw to the best of my ability. He has this thing that goes over his chest, like this. I have no idea what it is. I remember Jim Lee drawing a Gambit in a very cool way. I think Jim Lee's the one that created Gambit, right? And then he would have these like elements going across here. I think this was supposed to be some sort of sheath or, or shield or whatever. I don't know. But anyway, that's that. And then you can go ahead and, you know, you can create Wow, I really don't remember his costume. Let's say that he had the same thing in his legs here. So you can make things up. Fake it till you make it. And then I'm gonna darken his hair in. And I'll show you why. Since I'm not really um, aiming to finish a sketch and I'm not trying to make it magnificent, it's just a, a, a practice. I'm just trying to simplify everything as much as I can. So here on this arm, what I'm going to do is shade it in. And that kind of gives the element that it's pulled you know, back into the shadows. Same thing underneath here. And then even here where his body's pulling back, you can add some shades here underneath his arm. And, you know, I'm trying to do this as fast as I possibly can. So forgive me for taking up all your time. Hopefully you're learning something. And I did all this with a dull pen pencil too, so. I'm not showing off. I'm just too lazy to sharpen it. Okay. So there we go. We have a Gambit-esque character. Now I'll go and I'll look up some references and I'll be really mad at myself 
for what I've come up with here, but it's not horrible. What you can do at this point is, since I've shaded in his hair, I can go ahead and kind of erase a few lines here. And then draw some hair in there. Just little tricks of the trade. And then what would we do at this point? I'm not gonna do too much more. So something to, you know, you're always trying to sell your art. And what I mean by sell your art is you're trying to convince the viewer to keep looking at your art. And one of the ways to do that is to have the imagination put things together. So by adding a little bit of shade on this upper hand here, it kind of gives the idea that this hand is facing upwards. And then what else could we do? Um, I can actually shade in more of his leg. Now I'm not getting into all the leg muscles here. I'll just keep it very simple. I'm trying to keep this video as short as possible, which I've already failed. But anyway, what do you think? Does it look kind of convincing? Let's do a, while we're, since we're taking up all your time, let's do kind of a gambit face, like a headshot. We'll do it right here. Whoops, sorry for bouncing around. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna do a Gambit headshot right here. I'm gonna do this really, really fast. So I'm gonna imagine him three quarter, His one eye is gonna be here, one eye is gonna be here. Now you see at this stage, I told you before, I always keep the pencil moving as fast as possible. You might even move faster than me. It's okay, I won't be jealous. So all I'm doing at this stage is I'm sizing up the character. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, what's his bone structure? You know, he has kind of a egg shaped head. Uh, you know, his ear is going to go somewhere around here. He's got this skull that's coming back here. He's got the neck. He's got a longer neck because he's a kind of a lengthier character. And this is what I would refer to as placing information. That's all. You're just placing some information. And um, from here, you can start adding your your elements. So. We have a couple eyes, right? So I'll start with this eye closest to us. And uh, one thing about Gambit's eyes that I do remember from the comics is he has kind of a reverse eye where his the whites of his eyes are dark and um, it kind of makes it look cool. That was a really great idea that Jim Lee came up with. And then I'll go ahead and draw his nose. Now he has a kind of a longer nose. So I'll just draw it like this. And I'm giving him some eyebrows. This one that's furthest away is gonna kind of wrap around because we're seeing three quarters. And then underneath, I'm just going to Give him kind of a smirk. And an under lip here. And then I'm just gonna find some more lines 
decide where things go. Um, this is kind of where it comes to your style. Like, how do you draw faces? You know, uh, we know the major elements of the character, but really the style is up to us. If you want to make them realistic, cartoony, you know, it's really up to you. So I'm just giving him kind of an angular chin, pulling the jawline up. I'm imagining that his ear is right around here. And then he's got his, uh, his costume, so his mask. So I think that his mask kind of dips kind of like this and then it has this like shape that follows the angles of his face and then I think he has like this underneath the chin part of element and then we'll just draw in a generic ear don't have to get too detailed with this I know this is a lot of video. Uh, for those who have stuck around, let me know. Let me know that you've actually stuck around and you've watched the whole thing. Um, I'm kind of new to the whole YouTube thing. I teach classes on Udemy and Skillshare. Um, I do private mentoring and coaching, but when it comes to YouTube videos, it's a new, it's a new monster for me to tackle. All right, so there we go. And then for his hair, I'm just gonna whip up his hair starting from way down here. And I'm just gonna make it up as I go. I'm even going to give him some strands going this way. And I'm really just being playful and not really caring about the outcome of this sketch. What I'm really trying to show you here is my approach. So my approach is the same on all art. The only thing that's going to be different is my refinement. So if I'm drawing something more professional or for a client, um, I'm really gonna clean up my lines and uh, what I mean by clean up is I'm going to erase, I'm going to refine and redraw, and it's just going to look very clean. And it's going to have a lot of uh, details still, but it's just going to be a little easier on the eye when it comes to you know, the line work. So now I'm just kind of shading in where things go. And he has, in the comics, he has that trench coat that kind of pops out. I'm not looking at a trench coat for um, reference or anything here, but let's see. When I was a kid, I really loved how Jim Lee drew the trench coat. No hate on the trench coat. All love. All right, so there you go. So there's a very quick uh, rendition of Gambit. Now, with his legs, I could add a foot underneath. You know, I could even bring his foot down here if I wanted to. It's really up to you. Um, you'd have to shape it out and just de decide what works best for this pose. Um, and then on these hands, so one thing that you wanna do is use your hands for reference. So you see he's kind of holding the staff. So what I would do is I would angle this finger here and then I would bring all these down And then this one, you know, I could actually take this thumb and put it up like that. See what I'm doing? 
Just look at your hands for reference. And shape things in to the best of your ability. And then don't be afraid to erase and redraw. It's okay. There we go. So kind of a quick hand there. And uh, yeah, we'll stop with that. If you wanted, I know I say that I'm gonna stop and I just keep going. That's just the life of an artist. It's never enough. But um, you know, really just for the sake of your time, I am gonna stop. But if I were to keep going, what I would do at this phase is I would just start cleaning up. I would, you know, clean up the sketchy lines and kind of redraw them. Um, I would probably add more shadows and cross hatching, which I can do a whole video on, stuff like that, if you'd like me to. Um, but yeah, the bottom line is, is have fun because really, I would not be doing this right now if it wasn't fun. Just creating these characters or, you know, just doing this sketch the way I just did. Um, without knowing who I was going to draw was so much fun for me and it will be something that I can take with me forever like I know like all right well I can draw a gambit in this type of a pose now right so remember this stuff it's cool so this video is 42 minutes long I think that's a long time go ahead and uh, you know let me know how you feel let me know if there's something else you'd like to see me draw Please subscribe and like, help me on the algorithms because if, if this is something that kind of takes off, I'll do a lot more of these videos. Um, I really enjoy drawing and I'm always drawing, so why not just record myself while I'm, I'm drawing and share it with you guys, if it helps. All right guys, I'll see you in the next one. Remember, um, take any of my courses online if you'd like to. Uh, you can find me, actually I'll put the links in the des description below. Also follow me on Instagram if you're not already at Van Orden Art, V-A-N-O-R-D-E-N-A-R-T. And Comic Art Mastery is the name of my online school um, where I mentor and coach art students. Um, so if you're interested in that, let me know. That's it, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.